Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. I'm Michael Sullivan, business administrator here at FaithBridge, and it's a special Postscript because we're joined by our teacher of the day, Duffy Robbins. Thanks for being here, yeah, Duffy. my pleasure. We've just been uh, in a series called Life Under Construction, and Duffy today was talking to us about speaking the truth in love. And so, Duffy, in the sermon you were mentioning, hey, stick around for Postscript. I'm going to cover <laughs> white lies, and Thanks. what do we do with that? Uh, so, tell us, what do we do when it comes to white lies? Actually, when I said that, I was... Being deceitful. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, no. I, I, it's it, it's funny because, um, of course, whenever I you know come here and when I'm writing my sermon, I'm thinking through and praying through the passage, and like all the other guy, folks that preach here, and mm-hmm. and uh, and one of the questions that that I kind of kept coming back to was this question of white lies, mm. and and just to make sure we're all on the same page by what we mean by white lie, we're talking about, you know. Are, are there ever times when it's appropriate to say something that's not true for the sake of feeling, saving, mm. you know, just to, because you have, you know, you have kind of a choice. You go, well, I, I, I don't, I want to speak the truth, but I also don't want to hurt this person's feelings mm-hmm. or there's really nothing to be gained by telling me this. And I, it could be anything from, um, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're, you're on your deathbed dying and, uh, you know, is it good for your, you know, somebody to come in and say, I got to just really get some stuff off my chest, yeah. you know? Is that really the most loving? Is that what God wants you to get in there uh-huh. quickly before he dies? Tell him everything. Right. Um, or, you know, it might even be, you know, do you, if someone, if someone tells you that your family member is dying, you know, do you go quickly to the family member and, and sort of eliminate any hope? And you say, no, you know what, <laughs> appreciate your cheerfulness, but it ain't going to happen. Right. You're, you're going to die. And the doctor says it could be today. I mean, just, or, or even just everyday stuff. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Brad Paisley um, has a song. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a Brad Paisley fan. He has a song um, where he says, there ain't a woman in the world that wants to hear the word yes when she asks you if she looks chubby in her new dress. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, if she cooks all day, you gotta eat it with a smile, uh, even if it tastes just like bad rubber on a Goodyear tire. And then the chorus goes, uh, yeah, 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 you know, we all bend the truth. That's something that you have to get used to. And he goes on to say, that's love. You'll see, we all commit a little bit of perjury. Uh-huh. And, um, and having been married 46 yeah. years, I get what he's talking about, uh-huh. and so, uh, so that's that's the question, right. because because what I tried to say today, and I think this is a pretty represent good representation of what Scripture teaches, is that God hates deceit. Mm-hmm. We are called to speak the truth, mm-hmm. and so my struggle as I was kind of praying through and thinking about this week is, do how do I talk about the possibility? Or, or, or the appropriateness of white lies. And, um, and, and I began to realize that as I kind of researched it and thought about it, that, that first of all, I myself am still conflicted. Hmm. Um, but plus, uh, there's that it's, it's a wisdom issue. In other words, I, I think that it's not hard and fast, but I also think that once you start to nuance almost anything, mm-hmm like speak the truth, then 800 people in the auditorium will think, oh, well then my, my particular deceit is appropriate. Mm. And, and I guess I worry about um, giving people permission to do something that God does not permit. Mm. And so um, I decided I wasn't gonna be able to nuance it. I wasn't gonna be able to say enough about it mm-hmm. to, to sort of really weigh uh, the fact that this is what God says. Um, but there are other things that God says about kindness and about love and about, you know, affirmation or mm-hmm. hurtful words that, that, you know, counterbalance. And it's not just math. Uh, you, you have to use wisdom. You have to be guided by the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that's, kind of, that's kind of the, you know, the, the uh, perplexed 
place I found myself mm -hmm. in the thing. So to go back to your question, uh, what about why it was? Um, let's close in prayer. No, actually, so yeah, I guess I've kind of come to a point where I'm not prepared to say that, that's, that it's always wrong to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I can think of a couple examples, in fact, where I believe, right in the scripture, where it was completely appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one in the scripture and in one um, in, in just everyday life. Um, one, of the, one of the classic white lies in the scripture is um, in the Old Testament where uh, the spies, Caleb and Joshua and the other guys, mm -hmm. came over to spy out the new land. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, uh, when the Canaanites heard that these guys were there, they came to the house of a woman named Rahab, who was mm -hmm. also a prostitute. And, um, and they said, Is, are these guys there? And mm -hmm. she said, no. She lied. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they were able to escape because she hung this scarlet thread from her window. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and what's interesting is in, in Hebrews chapter 11, she's actually affirmed for her faith. Mm. Now, having said that, it sounds like, oh, okay, so then I guess it is okay to lie if you're saving, uh, you know, biblical characters uh, mm. from certain death. But the, but the writer of Hebrews doesn't actually affirm her for her, uh, for her deceit. He affirms her for her faith. faith. And her faith, in this case, was manifest by her willingness mm -hmm. to to, to lie. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it's not quite as, it's not neat and clean. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe neater and cleaner um, in some ways would be the story, for example, of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who I also quoted in today's sermon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you know this, Sully, but Bonhoeffer and a group of guys were a part of a plot to kill Hitler. Mm -hmm. So now you've got an added perplexity okay. because one thing to lie is another thing to actually commit murder. Mm -hmm. Um, but of course they were going, we don't think God approves of murder, but we're trying to prevent the murder of 6 million people. people. And, um, and so, uh, they, they were time, they had to use deceit. I mean, they couldn't be open and truthful about their intentions, mm -hmm. uh, or they couldn't have succeeded. Now, somebody could argue, well, they shouldn't have succeeded because they're trying to murder Hitler. But, mm -hmm. uh, if, if it were my parents in the prison, uh, or if it were me in the prison, I'd be really grateful. Mm -hmm. I'd be praying that God would intervene mm -hmm. on my behalf right. and somehow end this guy's wicked reign. Right. Uh, maybe, speaking of Hitler, though, the even more prominent, a better known case would be Corey Ten Boom. Mm -hmm. and some of our listeners might remember that uh, she and her family, uh, they were actually hiding Jews uh, mm -hmm. during uh, the initial uh, years of the Holocaust uh, in their home. Uh, because they knew that if they were going to be arrested, they were going to be t deported and probably killed. Mm -hmm. and, and so that required almost daily acts of deceit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she's sort of held up as a, as a person who is, who is uh, righteous and, and vigorous in her faith, which I think indeed she was. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that, 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 that reminds us that it's just not so neat and clean. Now, mm -hmm. it's a long jump to go from Corey Ten Boom hiding Jews who might be, you know, sent to a gas chamber mm -hmm. and saying to your wife, no, sweetheart, uh, oh my gosh, you look like you've lost 40 pounds. Yeah. Uh, that dress uh, makes you look almost uh, like a little bit hungry. Um, you know, I, I remember, I don't know if you remember the, the, uh, the Geico commercial where um, Abraham Lincoln's wife is getting dressed, and <laughs> yeah. and she says to Abe, "Do you think this dress makes me look chubby?" And he really struggles, existentially. Honest Abe, yeah. what's he gonna do? And he yeah. goes, "Perhaps a little." Yeah. And she goes, oh. "You know," and and you go, uh, "Is that really? Is it necessary? Mm -hmm. Is that necessary?" Now there are a thousand, a thousand. Uh, I can think of a thousand examples where it might have been. Really, it might be the most loving thing to do to say to someone, well, as a matter of fact, this is what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Or, well, what I've noticed is this. And how do you think I did? And it could even be like, I mean, I'm a college professor. I teach Christian ministry at Grove City College. If a student says to me, Duffy, what did you think of my talk? Well, not only are they paying for my honest opinion, mm -hmm. but for me to fulfill my mission at Grove City, I need to give them my honest opinion. I want to train these people to be capable 
ministers of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So even though it might hurt their feeling a little bit, and even though they might like me better and give me a better eval, mm -hmm. if they go, you know, it, it's it's I have to speak the truth mm -hmm. in love. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so I guess if you if you were hoping, if you tuned in, uh, that, oh, okay, Duffy's going to give us a, a clear, you know, deal. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were talking about adultery, if we were talking about, you know, other, there's some other sins I could think could be pretty cut and dried. Mm -hmm. But um, I, can, I can conceive in my mind of circumstances where it might be permissible. Having said that, it's always, always uh, risky to, to, say something is permissible that God doesn't permit. Mm -hmm. And so I want to counter this by saying this This is, like Paul says, you know, not the Lord, but I. So this is I, not the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be obedient to what the Lord says. And, and I'm wrestling through it to try to figure exactly how it plays out. Mm -hmm. I know that the Christian life, um, in, the, in the mess and muck of everyday life, uh, requires... But we go beyond just this, just, it's just not clear cut choices. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you say, okay, Sally's going on a date, who's she gonna date? The Apostle Paul or, you know, uh, you know, Epstein, you know, the, 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 you know, I can't remember the guy's first name, but you know, well, that's easy. Mm -hmm. But real life doesn't often play out that easy. Right. And so I, I, my concern at the end of the thing with Sully, I thought, here's what could happen. Mm -hmm. One of two bad results. If I, if I, and it could happen even as a result of this, but I hope maybe the nuance will help it. Mm -hmm. But one thing is you could have a bunch of people who leave Faith Bridge today feeling guilty mm -hmm. because they actually said to their daughter, honey, that is an amazing potholder. Mommy is so excited that you gave me that. Mm -hmm. Liar. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't want a bunch of people leaving feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also don't want a, people, a bunch of people going, okay, all right. If anybody asks me my opinion, I'm going to let them have it. Right. How'd you like the meatloaf? Oh my gosh, it was awful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know there are times you can do workarounds. You can go, well, I want to tell you something about that meatloaf. I've never tasted anything like it. You know, there, there are times when you can kind of fudge your way through it. Right. I'm not sure that's speaking the truth. Well, I guess it is true. You've never tasted anything like it. But I'm just saying, I didn't want, I didn't want next week we find out there are 10 marriages on the rocks because both partners start to say, no, this, we're going to just start speaking the truth to each other and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. But I also don't want people to default to our natural kind of sinful position. Mm -hmm. You know, Anselm talked about we're curved on ourselves and, and sort of go, well, okay, then I guess mm -hmm. what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Right. Or, you know, this is, this is for the kids or this is, I'm going to do. And then all of a sudden we just continue to multiply the deceits in our lives. And scripture tells us God hates deceit. Mm -hmm. Well, I think some of what you're pointing out is the heart behind it. And uh -huh. I think sometimes in these situations, uh, we think that we are protecting the other person, but in reality, I'm trying to protect myself. myself. And That's I think right. what you, in some of these bigger uh, examples that you cited, is people who were genuinely trying to protect the other person. Uh, and I think that's probably key to factor in when you're Absolutely. thinking about wisdom uh, and applying to these situations is, is it for my pride? Is it for my selfishness? Or is it really for the good of the other person. Yeah, but yeah. I appreciate you addressing it because I'm sure there were some people out there and, and like you said, what you don't want to do is, is crack the door inch and people take a mile and you also don't want to slam the door completely shut. Yeah, so yeah. I understand. I appreciate your honesty to say, hey, I'm, I'm wrestling through this. I'm looking at the scripture and trying to discern as well. Yeah. And I think that that's- Yeah, helpful. I'm going to read some more about it. Actually, a buddy, uh, one of my colleagues at Grove City College, Carl Truman, recommended a couple of books but I'd already left town. This is I'm, I'm, I've been traveling for a mm -hmm. while, and uh, and so I got to wait until I can get back uh, mm -hmm. to to look at those books because supposedly, according to Carl, there's these writers actually wrestle with precisely that that question. Mm. So yeah, that, that's the thing. You can appreciate why I didn't want to put this in the sermon. It would have yeah. been an hour and a half uh, <laughs> message. You know? Yes, and people might have left uh, saying. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, what a second. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, glad yeah. that you addressed it here. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to this postscript with Duffy. We'll be back with Duffy next week as we continue our Life Under Construction yeah. series. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.